Good morning, another day in Costa Rica, day number four, I think. Um, as you can see, it was quite muddy yesterday. And today is well in the morning, actually, there was a lot of rain, but uh, right now it looks promising. Even though we are leaving this nice place here in the highland of Monte Verde, um, you're heading more to a Caribbean yeah, type of, of uh, area and uh, hopefully there will be another type of arachnid waiting for us and more on it on the way on the drive to it. We are driving about three or four hours maybe so we'll see how this will go. to our next tarantula we are having a stop here we are having a stop in this area it's a pacific coast very dry as you can see and uh, Rito is working hard looking for Avonopelma semani and maybe Avonopelma crinirufum and what also should be here is Davos ruficeps, um, commonly known as Metropelma zebratum. Scorpion. Rito found a scorpion just in time. Oh, nice. As you can see here, looks like an adult male because the they are very, very slender as with the tarantulas. They have, uh, yeah, where the sting is located. The tail actually is uh, a lot slender, a lot more, yeah, it looks more elongate than in females. So this actually looks like a male species, probably Centruroides, um, because they're very common here. And it looks like the one who uh, stung me in uh, Nicaragua a few years back, but that's another story. So we will get some pictures and then continue searching for tarantulas. While looking at this adult male of Centruroides bicolor blowing in the wind, I would love to give you the chance to subscribe to the channel and hit the notify bell icon so you get notified when there is a new video from us. We have tons of videos on this channel with tarantulas in the wild. Make sure to check them out and leave a comment if you like it. We'll answer each and every single one. Would be great to see you more here. To us! <laughs> As you can see uh, in Costa Rica and generally in Latin America countries there is a lot of agriculture going on and therefore if you're looking for tarantulas or other arachnids um, you either can go into a private reserve or into a 
Sorry for the cars, but we're right next to the street. So you can either go to a national park or, as we do, just check the roadside embankments or the area right next to the roads and uh, check there for arachnids and tarantulas. So in this case we scattered this whole area with all the rocks behind me and in front of me and so far we found just an adult male scorpion. Just, it's of course an awesome find but uh, the arachnid we're looking for as you know we're looking for tarantulas so we'll go back to the car and drive a little bit further hopefully to a other place which is uh, in the end maybe more suitable for them what do you say Sadly, nothing. Good morning, everyone. New day here in Costa Rica. And uh, today we are going to try to find Brachypelma albopidosum. Hopefully this will work out. Uh, I'm not really sure, but the weather looks very promising. Um, almost no clouds, blue sky. There are some um, rainy clouds over there and it will rain from time to time as it did yesterday but uh, all in all it looks looks quite great so we'll continue our search and hopefully we'll find Brachypelma albopilosa. Looking around makes it clear that when the rain is coming in June everything is flooded and then you're going to find Brachypelma albopilosum sitting on these huge trees um, hiding from the flood and the water. So that's how Eddie Hymanson and his group found the spiders. now halfway in the day into the day actually uh, still in search for Brachypelma albopilosum in this area here in Costa Rica and actually it is uh, yeah not that easy to find so far we have not found a single tarantula or even interesting for us to photograph arachnid we haven't seen any scorpions nor any other Michalomorph spiders and yeah it's quite special here uh, it's dry season of course but anyway underneath every single log there is a lot of moisture but still we have no luck so we'll see how this will go so this area right here is in the region of Upala in Costa Rica this actually is the region where the type of Brachypelma albopilosum is from. That means this region, if we find Brachypelma albopilosum, then of course it is the real Brachypelma albopilosum. And uh, actually what I wanted to show you is the secondary rainforest habitat, which is uh, man-made. So it's almost completely covered in agriculture, meaning that yeah, there's a huge lack of uh, primary rainforest here. It's almost impossible to find primary rainforest in this region. So what we'll do is we'll search in these type of areas for tarantulas. And this is actually something which is typical for. So you see a lot of rocks, rock covered formations with uh, yeah, a lot of dense vegetation because of the missing big trees there is a lot of vegetation on the ground uh, in primary rainforest this is not something which is usually happening because the ground layer is yeah there is not much light on the ground layer and therefore there is not a lot of vegetation on the soil itself so 
what you can do is if you're keeping brachypelma in your um, tank back at home you could actually scape it something like this so make sure you have uh, a lot of leaf litter that's always great to have always make sure you have some small plants maybe so the moisture and overall humidity is uh, a bit higher than usual as I said we're in the dry season now in uh, March so in June where the actual rainy season is starting there is six times more rain and a lot of this stuff is actually flooded yeah so checking for the substrate humidity the top substrate in the dry season is actually pretty pretty dry but still a little bit um, moist but when you uncover some of the rocks here you can basically see very fast and immediately that it gets a lot more moist this is clay like substrate so always make sure you don't use pure cocoa fiber or other stuff make sure you mix it with a more clay like substrate so the spiders actually can build a tunnel or a burrow which does not collapse with uh, yeah, a single disruptment of the enclosure that's for it we will drive further Rito is having another snack here pizza on the go very important to keep uh, the mood up and running even though we're halfway in the day we've not spotted a single tarantula but uh, that's how it goes sometimes and on other days we're more lucky so a huge thank you to Eddie Hymansen who was able to send me a few pictures of Brachypelma albopilosum he found in the very same area um, a few years back in the Upala region and uh, they were actually way more successful they went there in the rainy season in June and found several different specimens uh, on the actual trees and not on the ground so this one is a subadult male you could basically see the difference once we are seeing the female specimen the next one over here is an yeah not so freshly molted specimen so the coloration is not that beautiful and the fresh female actually looks absolutely stunning you can basically tell that they differ quite a lot from pet trade material since in the pet trade they are most likely not a clear bloodline so there was a lot of hybridization involved in the past few years but these ones are from the type side or near the type side at least and this is the one you are actually seeing in the wild just a beautiful specimen and you can see the freshly molted female just right next to the yeah not so freshly molted female the coloration is quite different and the newly freshly molted female just looks absolutely amazing